Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, y'all. We have much to thank God for. My God, I don't know about you, but I have more than enough to thank him for. He's good. He's merciful. He's kind. He's patient. He's a deliverer. He's a protector. He's a provider. He's a friend that sticks closer than any brother. He's a father to the fatherless. He's a mother to the motherless. Hallelujah. Oh my God. He is the king and Lord of all. We bless him today. Oh my God, my God. I'm so happy to be in the house of God again. If I were here, truth be told, if I were here by myself, I'd be carrying on the same way. Because I don't need no music. I don't need no preacher. I don't need nobody to remind me who God is. Hallelujah. And, and the best praise doesn't even happen right here. My best praise happens in my house, in my car, throughout the week, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. That's when my soul cries out, hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. And we sang today what a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne. It's an honor to be called a child of God. It is an honor. And I'm so grateful that God has allowed all of us to be here today. Are you happy to be here? Amen. For those of you who were here last week, I want to say this to you. Don't expect last week's anointing this week. It was good, but today's a new day. And God is always moving. The Bible said he's a moving thing. He moves from glory to glory. So I don't come expecting what I got last week. That's wonderful. I'm coming expecting a new thing today from the Lord. Fresh bread. Hallelujah. So we thank God today. I'm so happy that we're here. We thank God for Pastor Ron and for First Lady. Pastor Ron is still away, uh, but she is back. Praise God. And we say thank God for bringing her back safely. And we continue to pray for Pastor Ron that he's getting the rest and he's recouping all that he has given out while he's away so that when God returns him to us, he'll be refreshed and revived and renewed, able to preach the word of God and do the work of God that God has called him to do. So I'm grateful, grateful, grateful to be here today. The Lord bless you. Ah. Father, we thank you. We honor your presence. We give you praise for who you are and for all that you have done in our lives. There is no God like you. There's no God that can do for us, to us, through us what you can do. And we say together, thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy that follows us all the days of our lives. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you for the angels of God that stand and camp round about us that fear you. Thank you, God, for protecting us from things we could not see. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Thank you for being the wall of fire about us. When the enemy came to attack us this week, he couldn't get through because the angels stood guard around us. Oh, we thank you. Thank you for keeping our children safe. Thank you for blessing their going out and their coming in. Thank you, Lord, for your very presence with us. And thank you for your Holy Spirit, the guarantee and the seal of God on our lives that we belong to you, Jesus. We bless you today and we honor you. Bless your words. Speak to us, God. Holy Spirit, do a work in us that we could not do ourselves. This is not a work of man. It is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. And so we thank you today, and we look forward to what you will do today and how you will glorify yourself today. In Jesus' name, amen.
This is just a prelude of thanksgiving to the Lord. Lord, I will lift mine eyes to the hills, knowing my help is coming from you and your peace you give me in times of the storms cause you source of my strength hey, hey. and you are the strength of my life oh Jesus and I lift my hands in total praise to you can you identify with that? Lord, I will lift mine eyes to the hills, oh, knowing my help. Oh, is coming from you and your peace you give me in times of the strength God and you are the strength of my life I lift my hands in total praise to you you are the source of my
with everything I have. Hallelujah. All that I am, I lift my hand in total praise to Yes, Lord. Oh, amen. 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 I agree with you, Jesus. I say yes to you, Jesus. I align myself with your will, Jesus. Ah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me ask a question. Has anyone ever been in a desert before? Has anybody ever been in a wilderness before? A dry, lonely, isolated, thirsty place, even sometimes dangerous, and yet also a place of divine deliverance and a place of great encounter with the living God. The desert has much to offer. The wilderness has much to give. When you're in a wilderness, there's nobody that seemingly can help you. And the only place to turn is to look up. Hallelujah. Lift up your eyes to the hills. From whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. But I want to give you a heads up today. That you may not be in a wilderness right now. And I'm not talking about a physical wilderness. I'm talking about a spiritual wilderness. The backside of the desert. The classroom of God. The place of preparation. You may not be there today. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that there is a wilderness with your name on it. One is coming. And today is a good day to prepare to enter your wilderness. It's a good day because God loves you so much. He wants to prepare you for that moment so that when you get there, you'll know exactly what to do. Hallelujah. To bring glory and honor to his name. So I want you to pay attention today so that you can understand what to do when you're led into your wilderness. Because see what's on the screen? The wilderness matters. Can you say that? The wilderness matters. Now say, my wilderness matters. This is going to obliterate, hopefully, all the complaining and the murmuring, like they did in the in the, in the wilderness when the children of Israel were in there and they complained and they murmured because they did not understand the purpose of the wilderness in their lives. They didn't understand the role of the wilderness in their lives. They didn't understand that the wilderness mattered. How you come out, though, will determine how you respond when you're in there. How you come out is going to be determined by what you say and what you do while you're in your wilderness. Will you come out strong, stronger, or weaker? Will you come out bitter or better? How you come out will determine how you respond to God in your wilderness. And I just want everybody to pay close attention to this message because I sense in my spirit that some of us are going to encounter wildernesses 
that we are only going to successfully make it through if we understand God is in that place with us. So the question really is, who will you look like, talk like, live like when you exit your season of the wilderness? Will you still sound like you, the complainer? Will you sound like you, the doubter? Or will you sound like Jesus when you come out of the wilderness? So whether you're entering in now or you're going through or you're exiting your wilderness experience, know this, that your wilderness, thank you. Your wilderness matters. So you can call your wilderness your dash. You know what the dash is? that moment in between your birth and your death. You can call your wilderness that. You can call your wilderness the classroom of God. You can call your wilderness your trial. You can call it a painful place. You can call it a place where you feel stuck. You can call it your waiting period. You can call it your destiny delayed. Or you can recognize your wilderness for what it is that God has an in-between place for you right now, and it is a stop on your journey with God. Your wilderness is a stop on your journey with God. Does everybody understand that? Where he's checking your oil in your tank and he's realigning you according to his purpose for your life so that you can be prepared to take your, your next place in your next level with God. There's a next level for you. I want to encourage you not to be satisfied with where you are. Don't be satisfied with your Christianity as it is right now. There's some things in it actually that God needs to obliterate. There's some thinking, some mind uh, 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 changes that he needs to make in you because what you're thinking is actually stunting your growth in your wilderness. And so God is putting us here right now, today, so that we can begin to shift and change the way that we think and respond and who we are when we reach or when we're in or as we come through our wilderness experience. It's an essential part of the way. This is the way. Remember that? Walk ye in it. Remember that scripture where Isaiah said, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And when you're in the wilderness, you need to hear a voice that can give you guidance and can direct you on your journey through it so that you reach your destination safely. This is the way. Walk in it because your wilderness, thank you. <laughs> and the reason why you have to walk in it is so that you have the capacity, if you were on the prayer line this week, you heard that word, you have the capacity to receive what God has waiting for you. Otherwise, you will not be able to steward the blessing and handle it with grace because you didn't understand how much your wilderness mattered. The, normally, I don't stay this connected to my notes, but I want to. I want to write. I want to get to you everything that God gave to me, and I know sometimes when I when I move away from here, I might for, forget something or miss something. That's why you see me staying out. I'll do my thing in a minute by way of the Holy Spirit. First Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. That's not our main scripture, but I want to read it here right now. It says, so be truly glad there is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show you that your faith is genuine. The wilderness actually begins to show you who you really are. It starts to expose you to you. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. 
So there's a purpose for you in that fire, in that place, in that trial, so that you can come out as pure gold. Amen? Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So now that we've established and determined that that place that you're in right now, the place where you're like, what's happening? What's going on? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Like, well, what's really happening right now? I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. Why am I here? Why do I feel this way? We are determined right now to understand that that place that you're in is called your wilderness. Welcome to your wilderness. It's time for you now, since we've determined where you are, to allow the Holy Spirit, who has all the intel and all the T for the younger ones, and the spiritual GPS, God's positioning system, He's going to show you how to follow the footsteps of the one who walked through the wilderness like a champion. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. It's time to work your wilderness with an end goal in mind. And I know in education, Dr. Randolph, we have a saying, that's a term called backwards design. So you're working with the end goal in mind, right, Dr. Randolph? So whatever you're going to, wherever you're going to get to, you're working towards the goal. Remember Jesus said who, I mean the Bible said who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He had the end goal in mind. He could see it. He could taste it. He could taste the victory. And so that's what gave him the courage and the endurance and the strength, hallelujah, to move on to the final destination. Hallelujah. And we've got to do the same. We have to do the same. He conquered his wilderness so that you could conquer yours. Bless Jesus. I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Very familiar passage of scripture again. This is where Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted. You know why? Because his wilderness, thank you, you'll catch it. Luke chapter 4. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread. But big B, it has a B-U-T, B, small u, small t. I want to capitalize that B-U-T. But Jesus answered him saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, King James says, that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. His sustenance was not in the life bread, the physical bread. It was in the word of God. That's how he was able to survive his wilderness. Then the devil said, verse 5, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered him, and said to him, get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only will you serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. 
For it is written, see, he knows the word too, y'all. It is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Let me say this right here. Some of you who say, I can't memorize the word of God. He just showed y'all up. He showed us up. The devil, the enemy of God, took the time to memorize the word of God so that he could use it to manipulate the son of God. But he was not able to do that. Learn the word of God. Take time with it. He will do it. And Jesus said, verse 12, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Another wilderness is coming after that wilderness. Don't think that you're going to get through one wilderness and never go into another one. Your wilderness will come and come again. But we can look at it one way or the other. We can look at it as a trial or we can look at it as a growth opportunity. That's my, my favorite word. We can look at it as some place that we are that God is trying to grow us. Jesus exited this season in the wilderness in power and ready to fulfill his next assignment. Verse 14 says, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. He accomplished his purpose for being in that wilderness because his wilderness, thank you, honey. This was a very special day in the life of Jesus. Because if you remember in the previous chapter, Jesus had been preparing for his launch into ministry for 30 years. And when he, he reached this official day when he was baptized by his cousin John in the Jordan River, Immediately after that, that the heavens were opened and the next voice he heard was a proud voice. I want Jesus to be proud. I want him to be proud of how I exit my wilderness. I want him to be proud of his daughter. I want him to be proud of his sons. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And it is said that that utterance from God is like when they were, it, it was referencing when a king was being installed into office. This was a day indeed of celebration. Just like when, remember, my daughter and Mike and Nathan and Ajane got baptized. It was a day of celebration. Y'all did exactly what Jesus did. Hallelujah. Jesus received his promotion into ministry, and then bam, he's led by the Spirit. Not to the temple, not to a celebration, but into the wilderness. Can you imagine? You're coming off a high, you know, a graduation and you're ready to go party. And the Holy Spirit said, no, not yet. C come this way. Don't go through that door. I got, I got. Behind door number two is your wilderness. Imagine, Jesus starts his first day on the job where he, he just gets promoted and he's led into the wilderness. Testing time has come. And Jesus is about to enter a very lonely isolated, challenging place. I mean, he didn't even get to enjoy his corner office. He didn't get to enjoy any of that. He went straight to the lab, to the testing place. My God, to the classroom of God. 
But his anchor in that moment was found in verse 1 where he, it tells us he entered into the wilderness and he wasn't alone. It said the Spirit of God led him there. It led him there. When the Spirit of God is leading you, rest assured you're going to get to your destination safely. Neither John nor Jesus were in the wilderness experiences alone, which brings me to my first PowerPoint. No, you can put it up. Know that God is with you just as he was with Jesus in the wilderness. I hope you will take notes because it's coming and you're not going to be able to remember everything you're listening to right now just like that. You've got to take some notes so you can go back and refer. Know that God, the Holy Spirit, is with you just as he was with Jesus in the wilderness. And I know that's the truth because in verse 1 it says he was full of the Holy Spirit. God's continued presence and operational power in his life. Psalm 23, remember it said, Though I walk through. That, that caught my attention. I, we've all heard that song. Right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Makes me to lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, restores my soul leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4, yea, though I walk through, I'm not here to stay. I'm going to walk through the valley of the, I love the words, I, King James is awesome. I like NLT when I'm studying, but to read the King James is like reading poetry. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. You get it? The valley of the shadow. It's a shadow. It didn't come to stay either. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Emmanuel is with me. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of everybody who thought I wasn't going to make it through the valley. Hallelujah! Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. Because when I'm with you, God, I get more than I need. I get more than enough. Hallelujah! Surely, goodness! My God, as I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, as I walk through, it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Even when I get to my next wilderness experience, goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. And I will dwell, I'm going to, Oh my God, I'm going to maintain my position in the presence of God. I'm going to dwell in the house of God all the days of my life. He promised that he would never leave you nor forsake you when you're in the wilderness. Hebrews 3, 5, 13, 5. He said, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. So he goes in with you, and he comes out with you. Matthew 28, 20. PowerPoint number two. Be very careful who you're listening to when you're in your wilderness. Watch what happens here in verse 2. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing, and afterward when they had ended, he was hungry. Pay attention. 
Ash, where's Ash? Let me tell you something about Ashley. When Ashley gets hungry, leave Ashley alone till she eats. She's okay. She's not the meanest person. But when Ashley needs food, Ashley needs to eat. And when you're hungry like that, you're vulnerable. Picture this. Milton, 2021. That's from, so some of you are too young to understand that expression. You know what I'm saying? Picture this, Sicily. <laughs> Picture this, Milton, 2021. Ashley's hungry. She's in a very vulnerable place. And Josh comes downstairs and just asks her a simple question. But because she's in a very vulnerable, hungry place, she doesn't answer him nicely. She wants Josh to get off her nerves. So she says something that normally she probably wouldn't say if she were full. But she's in a vulnerable place. She's hungry. Sorry, Ash. You get me after. The devil said, verse 3, see, Jesus was in this vulnerable place and he was physically weak. And the timing of the enemy's words were strategic. When you're in the wilderness, he's not trying to come up with something in the moment. He's strategizing over how he's going to take you down so that you will not bring glory to God. He's very strategic in his way of dealing with you. And that's why it's important that we know that God is with us when we're in the wilderness. And because of what he says, that's why we got to be careful about who we're listening to in the wilderness because we may be very vulnerable in those circumstances. We may have a habit of letting people speak whatever they want, whenever they want, into our lives in that vulnerable place. And so you lend your ear to people and it becomes a breeding ground for doubt and for fear and for you to start stirring up gossip and for you to start thinking about how disappointed you are the way your life is going and for you to be intimidated so much so that you want to run out of your wilderness experience and you abort the process of God in your life for your growth opportunity. But 2 Corinthians 2.11 says that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil, right? Because the area that we're most ignorant in is the area where the enemy has the most control. You don't know nothing, so he can say whatever he wants to you. And if you don't know your word, then you don't know how to come back, or how they call it, clap back. You don't know how to do that because you have not allowed the word to be deposited in you. And so you don't understand that when he's strategically whispering things to you and telling you that you're not going to make it, that your life is over. And I'm saying this because I don't care how old or how young you are. God has a purpose for your life, else you would not be here. You might not be able to get around like you used to, but your mouth is still working. Hallelujah. And you can speak the love of Jesus right over the telephone, huh, Sister Lenore? You can do it. You can pray. You can minister. Hallelujah. You can talk somebody out of that deep, dark hole they're in, and you can pray with them and strengthen them right in your home. Thank God. Somebody might be mad at me for saying this, but thank God for COVID-19. Because it exposed a lot of things. It even exposed the church, who we really are, what we're really made of. And I'm not, I'm not w talking against this thing because it took a lot of people out. 
we probably all know somebody who didn't make it through. But I believe it had a more than one multi-purpose. And it was that we would see who we are and how we would respond in our wilderness. Now think about how you responded. Satan said, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. If, if one thing Jesus never went into the wilderness with was an identity crisis. He always knew who he was and who he is. He said, I am that I am, right? God, he, look at he's God. I'm the first, I'm the last. I'm the beginning, I'm the ending. I am that I am. Hallelujah. Before anything was, I am. If I'm the son of God, my God, which leads me to my next PowerPoint, PowerPoint number three. Watch not just what you listen to or who you listen to, but what you say in your wilderness. In this place, you have got to develop the language of a conqueror. You got to know the words that a conqueror speaks when they overcome. You got to know how Jesus spoke when he was going through. He's the best example we have in a wilderness experience. He never turned back and said, really, I'm... Um, could you hold on a minute? I just need to get, gather myself. No, he knew who he was, and he did exactly what he knew to do. It is written. It is written. And he began to speak the words of God. And there was nothing the enemy could do to destroy him because he had possession of the word of God. Notice his response. But Jesus answered, saying to him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. There are all kinds of distractions out there, stuff that looks good and appeals to the eye, but will destroy you in the end. If the Spirit of God leads you into the wilderness, don't you think he has the ability to get you through and out of there? You have to know it is him who led you there. And if it is him, he, who led you into the wilderness, then the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. That's what the songwriter said. I would change it in this moment to say the safest place in the whole wide world is in the wilderness of God. No matter how glamorous the alternative to your wilderness is, don't take that road out. The best that God has for you is ahead of you. It's ahead of you. All you have to worry about what's behind you is that there is a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. That's all you got to worry about what's behind you. But ahead of you, are your best days yet. And the devil said to him, here he comes again with his two cents, right? All this authority I'll give to you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship me, all will be yours. If you will worship me, all will be yours. Well, wait a minute. Have you ever had somebody tell you how to do something you already knew how to do? How did it feel? Like, who do you think you're talking to? You know, you don't say that, unless it's your child. But anybody else that be talking, talking, talking about how to do this, that, and the fourth, and you are in your mind saying, oh, you don't even know me. I already know how to. Actually, your way is not even better than my way. I got a better way. The devil was offering Jesus what already belonged to him. Maybe he thought that because Jesus was hungry, 
he could get over on him. But Jesus knew what time it was. Jesus knew who he was when he came up to, out of the water of baptism. He knew who he was when he entered the wilderness. And he knew who he was when he went up that mountaintop. He knew that all, all authority was already given to him in heaven and in earth. He knew that the earth was his and the fullness thereof and everything that dwells therein. He knew who he was. How you speak in your wilderness, because Jesus' response said everything. How he spoke in his wilderness determined how he was going to operate in that place. Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. And Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. He said, get, you better get up off me. It's like the fly in your ear. Don't just hit it away. Knock it out with the word of God. My aunts in Kentucky, anybody from down south, or maybe even in the islands, you might know this. But when they're outside, nobody is outside without a fly swatter. A fly swatter. They're sitting down, they're enjoying the day, but they got a fly swatter in their hand. Because whatever comes their way, and they always get it. They always get it. Jesus is modeling how to successfully walk through the wilderness. He's showing us that because he overcomes, we overcome. Because he lives, we too shall live. Possess, embrace, and remember, and speak God's word in your wilderness. It's time to develop your language of a conqueror. It's time to develop your language. Whatever you were saying before today, when you hit a rough spot, it's, it's hard to, to, to um, so when you've been saying something for so long, or you were raised in something for so long, and you speak a certain way when you get into troubled times, instead of saying, I'm going to make it, Instead of saying, I know the Lord is with me. Instead of saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Instead of saying, no weapon fashioned against me will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me will be condemned. Instead of saying those words, you're saying, I, can't, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know. I, I, I'm done. And you give up. That's what you do. That's the response in the wilderness, is to say those words. Because you know what that does? That confuses the enemy. It confuses him, because he expects you to behave a totally different way. But when you start saying, God, I thank you. I thank you for what you are putting me through or taking me through, because I know you're in it with me, and I know that you're going to walk me through this, so I speak life into my situation. I'm not going to doubt. I'm not going to be afraid. I have no reason to fear because you are with me in the valley. God, I am going to bless you. Come what may, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. I have the language of a conqueror. Craig spoke words that come from the mouth of somebody that understands they are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Let me tell you why it's important for you to speak the word. It's important for you to know the word because Hebrews 4.12 says, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It's a two-edged sword. It cuts both ways. When the enemy comes and he starts saying things to you and you put on your whole armor, hallelujah, and you lift that sword of the spirit and you begin to wield it like a professional, hallelujah, in the presence of God. You cut whatever you didn't cut this way, you'll cut when you bring it back the other way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you swing it in both directions, uh, you're separating the truth that God is speaking from the lie that the enemy is speaking.
healing, hallelujah, and that allows you to see more clearly who he is. Bless the name of Jesus. That same word pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It deals with your mind, your emotions, your will, your intellect, where the pain is, where the anxiety is, where all those emotions hang out, where they can try to drown out the still small voice of the Lord. But oh my God, when the word of God is allowed in, when you give access to the word, that's why it's so important for us to know the word of God. You know what you might say, I don't, look it, I can't quote those scriptures like you just did. When you get, read it first of all. As Medea said, read your Bible sometime, it'll bless you. Read your Bible. There will be something in there. Go start. I don't care where you start. Best place is really John because you learn who Jesus is. But if you read your Bible, something will resonate with you because that's just how the Holy Spirit works. Jesus said he is our teacher and our guide. That's not a lie. That's for real. He'll begin to expose your mind to who he is. And something will resonate in your spirit that will, you'll remember. And that's your first contact with remembering the word of God. And you hold on to it, you deposit it, because at some point you're gonna have to draw and make a withdrawal in your wilderness. And the Lord said, please turn on the AC. I'm just saying. I spoke the word, look, it's happening. <laughs> you have not because you ask not. We need the word of God to confront those things that are facing us in our wilderness. It's your guarantee of God's faithfulness in your wilderness. What he says he will do, he will do. It's a lamp unto your feet. Oh, you know. See, you already got one under your belt. The word of God is a lamp unto my... Guess what? Really, if that's all you ever know, if that's all you ever remember, guess what? The word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my, my path. That means, God, you're going to lead me through this wilderness. That's all I need to know. Your word is leading me. It's a light unto my feet. It's a lamp unto my path. You're leading me. That means I'm coming through this world. See, you have something to build on. You can build on that word and you can start saying, I'm coming out because I know that your light is leading me. Your lamp is directing my path. Hallelujah. I'm coming out of my wilderness. And then PowerPoint number two, four, <laughs> not number two. You better praise your way through that wilderness. Don't you ever, ever lose your praise in exodus 15 20 21 remember after pharaoh was defeated and the children of israel came out on the other side of the red sea it says that miriam aaron's sister took her timbrel up and the women started following her and they began to praise the lord like they had no sense Hallelujah, because their God had just thrown Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. Hallelujah. And they began to praise. Now, guess what? That was when they were entering the wilderness, right? They came through from Egypt, crossed over. Next place they went, bam, into the wilderness. But they had a praise on their lips. Hallelujah. Praise is a weapon of warfare that is not carnal, but it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, because you're going to have those imaginations in your wilderness. Hallelujah. You're going to, sometimes you're going to imagine a thing that, <laughs> that isn't. You're going to imagine the enemy is going to make you imagine that God doesn't love you. He's not there. He doesn't care. He's not doing anything for you in the wilderness, but you need to know that God is investing himself into your destiny. Your goal is to come out of your wilderness bitter, better, better. Things are already better. Not bitter. 
wiser, not weaker, processed to enter your promised land. The wilderness is your place of processing, restored and ready to render unto the Lord all that he requires of you. You are stronger because of your wilderness. There are no wasted moments or seasons in your life in the wilderness. So I want to say to you, don't waste this season murmuring and complaining like the children of Israel, exhausting yourself about how you don't, you don't understand what's happening or you're asking God why he's allowing you to pass this way. Just know that the wilderness really does matter if you plan to be anywhere near the plan of God for your life. So don't misdiagnose your present situation. Some of us think we're doctors and we have pain in our body and we say it's one thing because we want to make sure that it isn't what we, it might be. And so we walk around with the pain until we end up having to go to the doctor. And the doctor surely says that's what you're experiencing. Well, we can fix it. And he fixes it. But all that time before you were walking around with a misdiagnosis. Don't misdiagnose your current challenge in the wilderness. God's not out to get you. He's out to get more of you. Remember that the wilderness is not about prepping you for your plans. It's about prepping you for the plan of God. Because your wilderness, hallelujah, your wilderness, amen, amen. Don't ever look down on your wilderness experience. And don't be afraid to move through it. God is with you. Hallelujah. So I just want us to stand for a moment. I'm just going to pray that God, come on, you can stand. I'm done. Did you get something that you can take with you? so that you can be prepped? I pray so. The Lord is with you. He will help you. He will walk. Actually, let me, let me give you just this last bit of encouragement. Jesus already passed through where you're going to pass through. He covered it all. He did it all. And so there's nothing that will ever take him by surprise. He passed through it all already. He walked through your wilderness already. He conquered it already. And that tells us that we are too conquerors in our wilderness. Father, we thank you. We thank you. What a good God you are. You have indeed the final say in how we move through this life. I pray today that everyone in this room and those hearing my voice by way of the virtual live stream will understand that God is with them, that they need to be careful who they listen to, that they need to be careful what they say, and that they won't go back. They won't go back. Give them what we heard last week. Pour out your grace upon your people to be able to stand having done all to stand. Bless your people. Make them know who they are. They're more than conquerors through him who loves us. And so we commit this word into your hands and I pray that the seed of the living active word of God has fallen on good ground and will take root, Father, that will carry us all until you come again. We bless you for your faithfulness we honor you for your presence, and we thank you for the transformation that is coming in our wilderness experience that will bring us to our next level in you because we understand that the wilderness matters. God bless you. God bless you. Shout praise the Lord. We hope you'll worship with us again next week right here on live stream at 10 a.m. Spring of Water, changing lives for the better.